Okay, so now let's continue our discussion regarding these three methods for splicing the belt. So as I have said, when you buy the belt, then you have to buy it on a standard, something like a uh, standard um, intervals of length. And you are the one actually uh, that's going to do the splicing. Okay, so when say splicing, so how do you connect the belts? So we have three methods. Number one, we have uh, clamp, clamp joints. So this clamp joint, it's actually something like this. So let's say these are the ends of the belt. So let's say this is continuous here. Now, the ends here, they're actually being clamped. And we are actually providing something like a fastener here, let's say a bolt. So that's how you're going to 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 splice. Now, of course, the clumping should be on the outside of the pulley. So let's say this one, this uh, this side is the inside. So let's say this is the pulley here. Okay, so that's one the clamp joints, and another one is called the lap joint. Okay, so when I say lap joint. It's just actually you're doing a lap splice. Okay, so let's say this is one end of the belt, and then this is another end of the belt. And here's your bucket over here, for example. Okay, and this will be the the lap length. Okay, so what's gonna be our lap length? says that we have to lap it um, three to five buckets and if you refer to our lecture handouts it's actually um, also providing like for example what's the diameter of the bolts that's your going to be used for four ply belts or five plies or whatever plies Okay, so that's the lap joint, and then another one is the um, butt strop. So for the butt strop, it's like this. So let's say this is um, this is one end of the belt, and then there's another end here, and you're providing something like a strop over here. Okay, and then you have to fasten that somehow. Okay, so one end of the belt and then another end here. And you are going to provide another, uh, something like another. Okay, so let's draw in 3D. So this is it. So you're actually doing something like this. Okay, so. So that's all. So when. Um, when we do the calculation or for example in our homework that I'll ask you to to compute the belt length and uh, let's say um, I'll state that it's it's going to be lap joint then you have to determine or you have to include this lap length and of course the total length would be for example this is our two pulleys one pulley on top and then this one uh, on the bottom so let's say um, what's gonna be the total length of the belt then we can just assume that this length the total belt length is let's say we have the center distance um, and we'll label that as C so meaning we have this length on one side plus another length on the other side so that's gonna be two times C plus the length arc length here and the arc length at the bottom and since there it's uh, they have the same diameter I mean the the head pulley and this bottom pulley typically has the same diameter then that's gonna be one half of pi D one of the circumference plus one of the um, pi D at the bottom then that's just gonna be by the okay so we can use this um, this equation for solving the 
belt length. Now, um, I'd like to point out again here that our method or our calculations here, um, they're just actually being derived from the available resources that we have or that's common to to our course but as i've also mentioned about this um this association then probably if if you'll have access later on let's say you're, you're a practicing engineer then um you can i think it would be also helpful and advisable if uh, we're, we're going to refer to their um, provisions okay so for now uh, again as what I've said then I, I just combine this based on the available resources that we have now let's talk about the um, optimum speed Okay, so for the optimum speed, now um, we're actually focusing our topic on the on a centrifugal type bad elevator, centrifugal type. So whenever we're we're dealing with the centrifugal type, then there's gonna be an optimum speed wherein you can actually throw the material or discharge the material properly. Now, if you have a um, let's say a low speed a lower speed then you're not actually throwing the material it will just fall back so let's say we have this back at elevators and if your speed is just low then the material will just actually fall back here but if you have um, let's say uh, at the optimum speed then you're actually throwing it at the right let's say at the right angle or or something but if you are actually operating it too fast then you're actually um, it cannot it can it can damage the, the material so it is very important that in the design of bad elevators you have to determine this optimum speed okay so the equation for determining this optimum speed can be derived from the I think from the centrifugal force uh, equations or something and then you relate that to this rotational mo motion but a simplified value that we have is gonna be here n optimum this that stands for optimum speed is equal to 29.9 that's a constant divided by the square root of r now this this equation and I remember if I remember it correctly that this this actually came out in the board exam during the time when I when I took the board exam and that is why I have to highlight it here because it's not just an equation that uh, that that you will no longer use after this course because it's actually part of our uh, of our profession now um, we have this speed optimum speed and that's gonna be in okay, let's say optimum speed and that's in rpm and this one this r this r value now the definition of the r is actually depends upon the reference but in our reference text by Wimberley I think that's a tactical handbook for the paddle rice boost harvest industries in the developing countries by Wimberley the definition of this R and that's what we'll also um, going to use is the distance from this center of, of the pulley to the one half of the pro uh, projection of this bucket 
Okay, so that's going to be our R. So meaning, um, how to find this projection that's actually given in the tables. So you have this projection plus the belt thickness and then plus this radius. Okay, so let's say this is our uh, radius of the pulley. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, this R. Okay, and then this R should be in meters. Now, if you're um, solving for for English units, then our equation for the optimum speed would be 54.19 all over square root of R, and this R would be should be in feet. Okay, so that's the optimum speed. Then the next would be the elevator capacities okay, so the elevator capacity is given by this equation Q uh, is equal to the small letter Q times V okay that's the velocity linear velocity of the bucket or if your if your reference is the belt if your reference is the belt here then that's going to be uh, probably the the belt uh, linear velocity of the belt times this uh, this factor or this parameter right here okay so this Q this is the elevator capacity and that's in meter cube per hour okay so that's just given in volume divided by time um, but once you have the density of the material, then you can also uh, you can also convert this to kilogram per hour. So let's see, um, in terms of tons per hour or something like that. Okay, so this one, the small letter Q, is the bucket capacity. So of course, if this is in cubic meter, then you have to express this in cubic meter. And if this is in kilogram, or if you want, let's say, a, in terms of kilogram, then you have to express this also in terms of kilogram. Okay, so where do you get this meter, this bucket capacity? In the tables from the manufacturer or suppliers, it's also, it's already tabulated. So it has the basic dimensions. Okay. It has the basic dimension, something like this, plus it also have, um, let's say, in some designs of bucket, you have something like this. So it's not a straight, uh, it's not a straight line. So there's a reference, let's say, x, x, and then, or let's say, x, y, and then this one is z. So meaning, what's the volume, if you're just referring to this water level or something like this, a straight level? So that's going to be x, y, then what's the volume here? And then if you're referring to x, z, then what's going to be the volume? Okay, so it's it's already tabulated. Now in our um, calculations, we'll use a full capacity here, but it's actually, we're we are going to multiply that to... to Two thirds. Okay, and this one, the uh, the packet linear speed, and this one would be in meters per second, and you can obtain this by using the equation v is equal to pi d n o. Now, actually, this d we are actually referring to this diameter at this point so from the center to this point of projection so that's going to be our d so let's say we can just write 2 r 2 pi r times n not so that's our linear velocity now this is just a, uh, a basic engineering dynamics equation wherein you are relating the linear to the rotational speed okay and this one this is actually um, number of bu of buckets per meter. 
So meaning if let's say this is one meter of the belt, then how many buckets are there? Okay, so meaning we can use this equation if we want to find the number of buckets per meter or how many buckets would be there in a total belt length. Okay, so uh, I'd like to point out also that there should be a proper spacing here. So I've included in our lecture handouts that for standard buckets, we have two times the, uh, let's say, the bucket depth or it could be three times the bucket depth. Okay, so the distance here could be two times this depth or three times because if you have two uh, if your packet spacings are too close then you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to fill it actually or you cannot be able to f uh, fill it properly so meaning you're not having the full capacity of the uh, of the bucket okay so at least this minimum these two times the depth or three times the depth this, uh, this will uh, ensure a proper filling of the bucket now for the power requirements we have this equation we have equation um, p okay is equal to uh, i think that's going to be q times h times f okay so th this equation this q this is actually the capacity and we can convert that uh, again we have kilograms per hour and we multiply that to the uh, gravitational constant g times 9.81 for metric so meters per second squared okay so times the height so that's the height from uh, we'll just take it as the height from the bottom pulley to the to head pulley okay so that's gonna be our height or I think this is just the center distance C so that's in meter and if you notice this is just what um, kilogram meter per second squared that's actually Newton per time so you can convert that to seconds and times the meter and that's gonna be the joules per second and then you can convert that to watts and then for watts you can convert that to hp so that you can size up the water now what is this f now this f is actually a loading something like a loading factor it says that if you have a downside loading because if you're loading uh, let's say we have a direction something like this then if you're loading here, that would be different if you're loading on the, uh, let's say this downside and you have upside loading. So you're actually having um, a, a different factor. So downside says you have 1.5. If you have upside, then you have to multiply the power by 1.2. Now, this does not, this equation does not yet include the friction losses and also the efficiency of the electric motor now if we can uh, if there's a way to solve this for the friction then it's also it's also possible but for us here we'll just take into account the friction so let's say we have other friction here uh, let's say some friction factor of let's say 30 percent okay so we can write it here g h f times uh, the friction factor so friction factor um, we can just write something like 30% of the power or it can be 15% or 10% or whatever okay so this is our calculations now we'll do one sample problem for this bucket elevator Okay, so for our sample problem, okay, so it says here the problem says that 
design and sketch a bucket elevator to deliver a paddy grain to a height of 15 meters. The required capacity is 35 meter or metric metric tons per hour. Use M 2416 bucket dimensions. So this one, this is just a um, notation uh, that they use in or by a man, um, manufacturer that we that we adapted okay so um the the tables regarding the dimension of these bucks is actually found in our lecture handouts okay so it says here m2416 bucket dimensions and you'll use a width a pulley width is equal to the uh, diameter of the pulley then assume belt thickness of 5 mm then power loss due to friction is 30% and use downside loading conditions. Okay, so this is actually a design problem. We're given with this required capacity and then we have to determine the dimensions, the geometry, the parts of, uh, of our bucket elevators. Now, if it's just an analysis problem, then that would be much easier because we can just simply we can just simply substitute the values to our equations and then we can solve it right away. But here, this is a design problem. Okay, so for the first part, or for the first step, we have to calculate the capacity of uh, selected, selected bucket. Okay, so from the table, we have 250 by 168 by 132 mm. So this one is the, um, the length, and then this one's the projection, and this one is the depth. Okay, and then we have uh, 3 liters capacity at XY loading conditions. Okay, so... Now the next one is to determine the pulley width and diameter. Okay, so in doing this, we have a length of 250. So meaning if we draw So let's say this is our belt and then this is our pulley this will be our bucket okay so it says here that we're given um, with this 250 mm bucket width and if we'll use 25 mm on both sides Okay, so again, this 25 mm, uh, the reference only s says that we have to add 25 mm, but it doesn't say both sides. But for us here, we'll just use 25 mm, both sides. So if you add that, 250 plus 25 plus 25, that's going to be 300. So meaning our belt width should be 300. Okay, so you have to check this. For example, uh, it happens that you landed on a let's say a non regular um, value something like 302 or 300 something now you have to check this in let's say probably table 3 this one for rubber belting so if you use rubber belts then we have to refer to table 3 of bias 302 okay so you have to check if what's the available with or you can also go to if you have a let's say a supplier and they have brochures or tables or specifications ready then you can just refer to that it's okay, so a 300 and then you have to check and then since this is 300 then according to so according to table 9 
table 9 of pass uh, 302 then we have to use um, the diameter or no the, the width of the pulley would be equal to 300 plus 25 okay so again I'd like to use 25 on both sides so we have a 400 mm diameter okay so this will be 25 mm 25 also then this one would be 400 okay so if so since the width of the pulley is equal to the diameter of the pulley then meaning that the diameter of the pulley is equal to 400 mm now the next step is to solve for the okay solving for uh, optimum uh, speed okay so we have this n not is equal to 29.9 over square root of r but what is r now for the r we have actually this 200 and we have this belt thickness of 5 mm so this one the the pulley diameter is 200 mm then this one is 5 mm the belt belt thickness and this projection one of the projection is 168 all over okay so r is equal to 200 plus 5 plus 168 all over so if you solve that uh, you get a value of 0 0.289 meters take note it should be in meters because this um, factor here or this constant is 29.9 so if you do the math what you get is 55.6 rpm all right so now since we have this optimum speed meaning that we have to set or we have to To use a pulley combination or con configuration that will attain this speed I mean in the drive in the that's in the drive okay so anyway let's continue our solving for for bucket speed okay so we have V B is equal to pi pi dn but our d is 2r times n naught so if you do the calculations times 0 0.289 that's in meter and then this one is in rpm and also you have to convert this okay, times minute divided by 60 seconds so you have 1.68 meters per second All right, so now let's solve for the uh, capacity. Okay, so solving for capacity. Uh, actually, we'll use the capacity equation, but we're actually solving for bucket spacing. Okay, so for our bucket, we have three, three liters. So that's three liters divided by Okay, so if you convert it to meter cube, okay, 1,000 liters, times the density. So the density is 576 kilograms per meter cube. That's the density of a potty grain. So let's write it here. Density is 576 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, so now you have that, then you can solve for the spacing using this equation times vb times this um, number of buckets per meter okay so since we have this required capacity and we have this and we also have this then we can solve for the spacing so it's just q required all over q bucket capacity times the linear speed so what is this q required it says three uh, 35,000 kilograms per hour 
and you have to um, express that in terms of seconds then that's going to be 3600 seconds because our belt speed is in seconds so that's going to be uh, this Q is um, what is this that's 1.7 28 kilograms times 1.68 meters per second okay so I forgot this is 1.728 kilograms okay so if you do the math then you can actually solve for this spacing which is 3.35 buckets per meter Okay, so I guess I don't have much time again, then I'll continue the calculation in the next video.